هذا ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم يؤمنون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا مولانا محمد عليه وعلى آله أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم Last time we discussed, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, we discussed the, at the end of the uh, episode, we discussed the way that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was uh, told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal with the requests of his wives, asking uh, for more, uh, more abundance in terms of provision, uh, for more wealth. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, of course, as, as, as we all know, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, chose to uh, completely put the dunya or the world behind him. And now this is something specific and exclusive for the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and you know, for, 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 for some of us, subhanAllah, uh, you know, some people will uh, choose to pursue that lifestyle, others will choose to acquire wealth and use that wealth as a means of service. And we discussed earlier on that wealth could actually be a means for you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it could be a means for you to be distracted by, uh, by, by it and, and away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And similarly, poverty can be a great, uh, you know, humbling factor in people's lives, but it can also be a means or a source of grief and a source of conflict for others and may lead, it may lead them to to, uh, you know, causing uh, commotion and causing uh, difficulty. But the Prophet Muhammad uh, he was always, always uh, humble. And the Prophet Muhammad told his, uh, you know, his wife uh, and told his wives, uh, you know, if you want the dunya, go ahead. But if you want the akhirah and you want what is better, then stay and be patient with this and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's reward is much more immense than these temporary uh, pleasures that can be felt or experienced in this dunya. Now we come to another beautiful, very beautiful moment in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life, but it's also a very painful moment. Actually, one of the most painful moments. As a matter of fact, some historians and some, uh, you know, Alhamdulillah, some ulama say that this is perhaps one of the most painful uh, moments in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu life. Now. This is going to be the episode about the major accusation. The accusations that were directed towards our beloved uh, mother and the wife of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, Aisha radiallahu anha. Now before we start, I want you to imagine the relationship that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had with Aisha. Put that on hold, imagine what they were like. We're going to recite the ayat together inshaAllah and come back to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إن الذين جاءوا بالإفك عصبة منكم لا تحسبوه شرا لكم بل هو خير لكم لكل امرئ منهم ما اكتسب من الإثم والذي تولى كذره منهم له عذاب عظيم لولا إذ سمعتموه ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات ظن المؤمنون والمؤمنات لأنفسهم خيرا وقالوا وقالوا هذا إفك مبين لولا جاء شهداء فإذ لم يأتوا بالشهداء فأولئك فأولئك عند الله هم الكاذبون ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته في الدنيا والآخرة لمسكم لمسكم فيما أفضتم فيه عذاب عظيم إذ تلقونه بألسنتكم وتقولون بأفواهكم ما ليس لكم به علم وتحسبونه هينا وتحسبونه هينا وهو عند الله عظيم ولولا إذ سمعتموه قلتم ما يكون لنا قلتم ما يكون لنا أن نتكلم بهذا سبحانك سبحانك هذا بهتان عظيم 
يعظكم الله أن تعودوا لمثله أبدا أبدا إن كنتم مؤمنين ويبين الله لكم الآيات والله عليم حكيم إن الذين يحبون أن تشيع الفاحشة إن الذين يحبون أن تشيع الفاحشة في الذين آمنوا في الذين آمنوا لهم عذاب أليم لهم عذاب أليم في الدنيا والآخرة والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون ولولا فضل الله ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته ورحمته وأن الله وأن الله رؤوف رحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Before we discuss the ayat, let's try to understand the relationship that Aisha had with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. One day, it was the day of festivity for the people of the Ahbash, and there were a lot of street performances in the, you know, in, 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 the, in the public sphere, right outside the door of Aisha's area of residence, Aisha's house. And the Prophet Muhammad noticed, and Aisha noticed that the event was taking place and it was going very quickly, so Aisha did not want to miss it. So the Prophet Muhammad told her, Aisha, I open the door and I will basically uh, you know, stand in the door to block anybody from seeing. And he basically, he had, he had very broad shoulders, the Prophet Muhammad so, <coughs> excuse me, so he used his broad shoulders to cover the door or to cover the entrance and he told Aisha, rest on my shoulder. And Aisha rested her chin on the shoulder of the Prophet Muhammad with a smile on her face and she was very happy to be with the Prophet Muhammad And the Prophet Muhammad after a while he asked Aisha, are you done? She says, no I'm not done. After a while he asked her, are you done? No I'm not done. And again a third time he asked her, are you done? Finally she said, yes now I'm done. And she stayed quite a while with the Prophet Muhammad in that position. And Aisha narrates, she says, after a while, I was no longer interested in, 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 in seeing what was, uh, you know, what was left on display. But subhanAllah, I was enjoying the company of the Prophet Muhammad the company of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I was enjoying having my chin resting very near and on the shoulder of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you fast forward towards the very end of the Prophet Muhammad's life, Subhanallah. The Prophet Muhammad sallam, you know, when he's on his when he's on his deathbed, when death is approaching him, he's feeling pain. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she's holding him. She's holding him. He's in her lap. Subhanallah. And he 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 chose to stay with her because you know he loved her very very much. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then Aisha, as soon as one of the companions walks in, uh, he had a miswak. He had a he had the you know the the, the toothpick or the toothbrush that the uh, that the Prophet Muhammad sallam used. And one of his sunan was to actually brush his brush his teeth every salah five times a day. Subhanallah. Allah. So the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he looked at it once and Aisha right away she knew. She caught the Prophet Muhammad Sallam's glance and she knew that he was looking at the miswak. So she asked this person, can I please borrow the miswak or can I have the miswak because it was brand new. So she took it from him and she actually put it in her mouth. She moistened it the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallam liked it and then she put it in the mouth of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam and she brushed his teeth for him. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam smiled and he was so happy. But that's the relationship that Aisha had with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Where she knew what he wanted without him having to verbalize it. By the glance, by his eyes, she knew what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was thinking about. And there are many, many, subhanAllah, beautiful, beautiful stories uh, that, that, that one can really, really uh, learn a lot from in terms of the way the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu behaved with, with his wife Aisha and the mutual love that they shared, subhanAllah. Now here we come to a very, a very, very painful moment. Aisha, she narrates and she says, every time we would go for battle, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu would pick one of his wives uh, in, a, in a fair manner and he would basically make a draw, a fair draw between them and he would pick one of them and he would basically have her accompany him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through the battle. So, or, or, or through the journey. So she says, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he did the same thing that he used to do and this time it was my turn to go with him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So I went and the battle finished and the Muslims won, Alhamdulillah. So she's narrating now. And she says, after finishing the battle, we were on our way back to Medina. And we were at the very final stop before approaching Medina. 
And it was, you know, subhanAllah, night time, so we decided to rest and continue our journey in the morning as the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was. And she says, I rested and I got up after a while to basically use the bathroom, to relieve myself. So she moved away back then, there was no indoor plumbing, so she moved away from the, uh, from the caravan, from everybody. She moved away for, far away and she basically uh, relieved herself. And after she's done, she's walking back and she feels her neck and she realizes that she's missing. She realizes that she is missing uh, the amulet, one of the amulets with the beads that was given to her by one of the women of the Ansar. It was given to her as, as, as something to borrow. Uh, you know how it is sometimes women, subhanAllah, exchange jewelry. So it was something that was a trust that she had to give back. So she was very, very uh, upset and disappointed. She said, I can't, I can't uh, miss and I can't lose something that the, prop, that, uh, that the uh, woman from the Ansar has given me as, 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 a, as a trust. So she went back trying to find it. And she went looking and looking and looking and looking for a very long time until she finally found it. And on the way back, she was tired. I want you to imagine you're tired from the travel and this and this. And you've been looking for a while. So she says, you know, I decided to just sit down for a bit and lay and, and, and lay down for a bit and then eventually I would catch up with the with the with the with the uh, with the caravan. By the time she subhanAllah woke up, everybody has already left. Everybody has already left. You know, sometimes sleep overcomes us. And now what does she think? She doesn't say, hold on a second, how dare they leave me? Why me? Why are they doing this to me? She, she in, the, in, the, in, in the height, in the height of, 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 of respect and in the height of, of, of subhanAllah, uh, yani, expecting the good in others and seeing the good in others, she says, perhaps my weight was too low and they couldn't really notice the difference of the caravan with or without me. You know, back then she would basically sit on top of the camel in the covered uh, caravan or in the covered, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the top of the, of the camel will be covered, uh, drawn uh, by, by clothes or by fabric, and she would go with the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, and that was the, the, that was the, uh, the, the, the norm. Now she says, you know, they, they, they couldn't probably, they probably didn't mean to, I was just too, you know, she was uh, lightweight, alhamdulillah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she took pride in that and she says, uh, alhamdulillah, they probably didn't uh, notice the weight or the light uh, or, the, or the difference in the weight. So she gave them the benefit of the doubt. And the Prophet Muhammad sallam taught his companions, anytime somebody is left behind, immediately or anybody, some, any, anytime somebody is left behind and finds him or herself uh, to be isolated or to be alone, sit where you are and wait for, uh, you know, uh, support to come. And this is important. Sometimes, you know, when we go on school trips, uh, if you've ever went on a school trip with uh, your teacher or with, uh, you know, a guide, what happens is your guide or your teacher will tell you, if you ever get lost, stay where you are. Because what happens when you get lost and you, uh, you know, you keep walking or you keep trying to find your way back, you eventually get more and more lost. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam told the companions, anytime this happens, and he told his wives, anytime this happens, stay where you are. So she stayed where she is and she waited. Now the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, he always assigned and allocated one of the companions whose job was to go back and ensure that anything that was left behind or anybody that was left behind was recovered and was guided back uh, you know, uh, calmly and, 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 and safely. So she says, in, in this journey, subhanAllah, I ended up being left behind and after a while Safwan, uh, Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal, he came back. Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal, he came, he came, uh, sorry, Safwan ibn al-Mu'attal, he came. And Safwan was one of the companions and his job was basically in that, in that, in that battle to go back and check and make sure everybody is, is, is fine. So she says, as soon as he came, I drew up my, my, my face cover and all he said to me was, فَاسْتَرْجَعَ He says, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And that is to indicate that he knows that she's there and that is to indicate, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ means we are all to Allah and to Allah we're all returning. So it's to basically indicate that this is a bit of a difficult situation. He did not want to communicate using his own language. So subhanAllah, because of the modesty that he had, so he used the Quran to indicate to her that you know what, it's time to return and we will be returning uh, insha'Allah after the break. Jazakumullah khairan. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين Welcome back from the break May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you So we're talking about the incident of ifk the big concoction the major accusation that was directed towards the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم's wife Aisha May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be, be pleased with her Now Aisha she narrates and she says when I was left uh, behind, eventually Safwan ibn Mu'attal, who was a modest, uh, respectful uh, companion who witnessed Badr, uh, came back and he basically was looking and he found 
Aisha radiallahu anha by herself. So Fastarja, he says, Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi raji'oon. And that was to indicate uh, the severity of the, of the situation and to indicate that he was no in he's not interested in any conversation, obviously, and he's only using the words from the Quran. And that goes to show you, subhanAllah, the ways that the companions, male and female, uh, treated one another, especially the way that the male companions treated the uh, wife of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam or the family, the household of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam in general. And here, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha, of course, she uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, gets uh, gets on top of the, uh, you know, uh, the camel, or she walks back one way or the other. She basically finds her way back to uh, the 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 rest of the people with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And of course, during the time, she says there was no communication whatsoever between uh, myself and Safwan ibn Muattal. It was again a very respectful uh, encounter, subhanallah. But what happens when uh, when she's coming back? Uh, there's obviously, uh, you know, hypocrites uh, that noticed. And one of them, of course, the head of the hypocrites, Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. When he noticed that Aisha radiallahu anha, was approaching with Safwan, uh, of course he failed uh, in previous attempts to uh, you know, cause fitna and tension. I remember when he took a third of the army back uh, you know, in, in, in one of the battles, uh, he, he tried to basically defeat the Muslims in, in some subtle ways, but it wasn't working. So now he said, you know, I have another way. And he wants to, he doesn't want to be the person to, to say things and, and, and for it to be attributed back to him, but he wants to basically cause some fitan. So what he does is he goes from the beginning till the end of the troops and he starts whispering in people's ears to try to basically get a conversation going. He starts to tell them, hold on a second, look, Safwan is coming with Aisha. What do you think a man and a woman uh, could be doing at this time? What was she doing with him? Where were they? And he starts to ask all these innocent questions from his end. Oh, I'm just asking questions. But he's only doing it to basically start the talk and the chatter. And quickly the rumor spreads and people begin to talk. And you know what happens when you start a little rumor here? By the end of the, subhanAllah, the, the, the end of the, uh, you know, the chain of narration, as you want to call it, the rumor has been butchered and, you know, subhanAllah, things got way out of, out of out of line. So Aisha Neri, she says, uh, I basically came back and as soon as I came back to Medina, I felt sick, I felt ill. So I laid in the bed for many, many days recovering. And you know when you travel, sometimes because of the travel, subhanAllah, we all, when we change air and after that, and I remember she slept outside uh, for a while in the cold, so she got sick. Now what happens to the people of, Med the, 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 the munafiqeen or the hypocrites of the people of Medina, what did they say? They started basically, uh, you know, increasing the, 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 the rumor and, and exaggerating. They're like, hey, look, Aisha's sick after, you know, what happened. Allah is punishing her for the, something that she did. And things got a little bit, uh, you know, terrible. And, and, and the rumors started being exaggerated and, and really, really blown out of context. Now, the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, because his wife, of course, Aisha, was ill, he didn't say anything. He let her, you know, recover. But, of course, his treatment towards her uh, was affected. He was not as affectionate, as loving, as, as, as caring as he, as he was. So she just figured, hey, he's probably a little bit tired and whatnot. Uh, and, and, and maybe I'm just a little bit of a stress uh, on him in terms of being sick at this time and he's so busy. So she told him, uh, oh Messenger of Allah, can you give me permission to go back to my house and to spend some time with uh, my father and my mother, Abu Bakr, and, um, and, uh, and, and, the, and the mother of, of Aisha radiallahu anha. And so she uh, was given permission by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And when she did go to the, uh, what, the, 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 the house of, of her father, uh, she came in and she noticed that her father and her mother were acting a little bit different uh, because, of course, they heard uh, the rumor, but they didn't want to say anything to her. And it wasn't until uh, it wasn't until she had to go use the bathroom that she was basically uh, going with uh, the mother of Mustah, Mustah ibn Asas. So she was going with this uh, with this uh, lady who was basically helping her walk to use the bathroom outside. And as she's walking, she trips. When she trips, the 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 the, the mother or the the the, the mother of Mustah. And Mustah was actually one of the people that worked in the house of Abu Bakr, worked for Abu Bakr, and he was actually a family member of Abu Bakr. He was just uh, very, very poor, so Abu Bakr felt bad for him, so he would actually pay for him and help him financially. So imagine one of the family of Abu Bakr and one of the family of Aisha, like her, 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 you know, her direct relative. Uh, what happens is now his mother is walking Aisha out and her, his mother basically trips while she's walking Aisha. And it was one of the habits for, of the Arabs when they trip or something bad happens, they would curse uh, somebody. So the mother cursed Mustah. So Aisha says, hey, why are you cursing him? This is not proper. Don't do that in my presence and don't do that ever. He's from the people who witnessed, uh, you know, he's a good man uh, and, and don't say that about him. So the mother, she said, oh, you have no idea what kind of stuff he's been saying about you. 
So Aisha now she hears, uh, what do you mean? What has he been saying about me? So she tells her, oh, they have said this and this and this and this about you. Aisha literally drops from the, from the shop and she rushes back to her mother's house. She says, oh, mom, what happened? Uh, what, is, what are they saying about me? Her mom tries to comfort her. She tells her, honey, you're beautiful. You're young. You're the beloved wife of the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. A lot of people envy you. It's only normal that they would start these rumors about you. And of course, uh, she goes up to her father who's praying and she tells him, dad, uh, of course he's praying so he doesn't respond and what he, what he tells her after finishing is he tells her, subhanallah and he's a little bit disappointed she can see the sadness in his face he says we were the house of abu bakr before islam and now after islam islam has brought us more and more honor and it's sad to see the name of our family mentioned in this way subhanallah and so he's a little bit disappointed now what happens is Aisha radiallahu anha she basically uh, no she, she she rests and she's and, and she's now trying to recover from from the difficult commotion and she says you know I cannot sit I can or I cannot eat I cannot sleep she's trying to recover but she can't eat she can't sleep because of the commotion and the rumors are spreading further and further and, and, and days have passed since the initial uh, you know uh, rumors started and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam hasn't said anything and so the Prophet Muhammad Sallam comes to check up on Aisha and Aisha, she, she, she subhanallah, she looks at him, she tells him, Ya Rasulullah, you know, obviously she heard, and Rasulullah, what, 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 like, what do you think? And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam told her, Oh Aisha, if you had committed anything, seek repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you, and he was about to continue, then Aisha cut him off, she said, ah, what do you mean? I can't believe that you, and she got so upset, I can't believe that you have, you have now, uh, probably believe the rumors and regardless of what I say subhanallah and he, she was a little bit disappointed to hear that so she went up she, she, she went up to her own room she locked her place she locked her place she uh, basically uh, put herself away from everybody else and she kept crying and crying and crying and now the Prophet Muhammad uh, you know he receives the revelation and the revelation comes to prove the innocence of Aisha radiallahu anha but let's read the ayat together and try to analyze them the ones who came with the concoction and the lies there are a group amongst you they're a strong group amongst you but they are hypocrites don't think it's actually bad for you it is really good for you what do you mean how can something like this be, be good for you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then in the, in the next ayah in ayah 12 he says لَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُهُ ظَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتُ بِأَنفُسِهِمْ خَيْرًا وَقَالُوا هَذَا إِفْكُمْ مُبِينٌ had you heard this news and heard these rumors and actually did what two or some people from the people of Medina did, it would have been better for you. So what happened? Here the ayah is talking about Abu Ayyub al-Ansari and his wife. Abu Ayyub came to his wife and he told her, Honey, if you were in Aisha's uh, sh situation, would you do what they're claiming or accusing Aisha of doing? And then she told him, I love you, my husband, and I fear Allah, I would never do this. Then he told her, well, obviously Aisha is better than you. And so if you wouldn't do it, Aisha would never do it. And then she did the same thing. His wife told, uh, she, she, his wife told uh, like, uh, the, the, the wife of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, she told him the same thing. Well, would you, if you were in Safwan ibn Mu'attal's uh, position, would you do what they're saying Safwan did? And he says, no, I love Allah too much, and I love you too much, and I fear Allah too much, I would never do anything like that. So then she responded, and Safwan is much, much better than you. So if you wouldn't do it, then Safwan obviously wouldn't. So Allah says, had you heard these rumors, uh, then you would have probably said to yourself, if I were in this situation or in this situation, would I have done it? And if the answer was no, then you would know that the answer was no for them as well. But the people who believe rumors about others and spread rumors about others, they are the most likely people to commit the atrocities that they're basically propagating. Subhanallah. Because when you hear something that sounds uh, so out of line and so disrespectful, and you know yourself you wouldn't do it, you expect the best in others as well. So Allah gives us here a model in terms of the way that we deal, subhanallah, with, with, uh, with uh, the, 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 the rumors that are spread. And then Allah says, لَوْلَا جَاءُوا عَلَيْهِ بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءِ From now on there, there is going to be a rule that there has to be four witnesses that must see the act before they would announce something like this, before they would start rumors like this. And this becomes a very important ruling in Islam because it would prevent uh, so many accusations, so many innocent women from being accused of something that they did not do, especially in Islam where the punishment for zina and adultery is, is, is severe. But four witnesses makes it, subhanAllah, a, a condition that only if the act is public, an indecent act, an act that is witnessed in, in the public becomes punishable. And this basically prevents uh, the, 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 the society from regressing 
towards a position where filth is accepted, normalized, and people are, subhanAllah, displaying uh, you know, their, 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 uh, their sexual affection or their, subhanAllah, sexual immorality publicly. Because what happens when something becomes public, it, it affects everybody else and then it becomes, subhanAllah, uh, normal. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here teaches us a very important lesson. Right? The, the wahi or the revelation waits many, many days before it comes. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, yani this is one of the greatest testaments to his, to his uh, prophethood, to the fact that he received the revelation from Allah. Because could have, he could have easily come out and he says, no, Aisha is innocent. Or he could have easily created, like if he were copying the Quran or writing the Quran down by himself or coming up with the Quran by himself, then he could have easily pro proven that Aisha or said that Aisha was innocent. But no, he waited and he was really, really affected. And he was waiting for the revelation to come. Days and days and days. And eventually, the revelation came to prove the innocence of Aisha. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, again a, one of the uh, Subhanallah uh, you know, proofs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallam's honesty and sincerity in receiving and awaiting revelation. And also, it, Subhanallah, this this situation eventually would bring Aisha and the Prophet Muhammad Sallam much much closer. Sometimes this diff these difficult situations, you know, they really test the way people love one another. But Subhanallah, when you go through them together, they really really bring people together. So when the Prophet Muhammad came to Aisha, he came to her, he said, Aisha, Allah has proven your innocence from seven heavens above. And Aisha subhanAllah is told by her mother, thank the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then Aisha here, she does something very important. She says, on this day, I thank nobody else but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And she says, she goes into sujood and she prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet Muhammad sallam obviously smiles, but of course, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's very comforted at the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has proven the, uh, subhanAllah, the innocence of his uh, beloved wife. And then also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ My brother, my sister, Sometimes we like to spread rumors uh, just, just for the sake of you know, uh, creating conversation. And sometimes you know, media, uh, you know, people want to uh, talk about something popular. They want to popular, popularize their channel. They want to popularize their uh, Facebook uh, you know, uh, uh, account or, or their page. So what they do sometimes is they post very controversial things and they attack other people and they accuse other people or they use subhanAllah uh, you know, accusations and they propagate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, have real, real, real damaging impact on your relationship with Allah and on your relationship with people. Be, be very careful of what you share. Be very careful of the accusations. When things like this come, you know, try to uh, brush them away. Look for a benefit of the doubt. Do not put people in this uncomfortable position. And here is a very important lesson for anybody who's been in a situation like this. If you've been accused, if something has been said about you, remember my brother, my sister, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring the truth out. And if you've been put in a situation like this, falsely accused of something, then remember Remember, Aisha, the mother of the believer, had subjected or was subject to similar accusations, but Allah proved her innocence. And so if, if someone like her can be put in a situation like that, then subhanAllah, we should be as Muslims, be very cautious to also respect people's reputation, respect people's privacy, and not spread rumors or spread things that we are not fully aware of, especially if they, subhanAllah, deal with privacies of the uh, family matters and the home matters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our households, protect our spouses for us, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us sincere and allow for our families to be a means of comfort for us and a means of peace. Barakallah feekum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة لأولي الألباب ما كان حديثا يفترى ولكن تصديق الذي بين يديه وتفصيل كل شيء وهدى ورحمة لقوم